am I? Who am I? Why do they want to kill me? I can't remember anything except two words. Coronet Blue. Coronet Blue. himself Michael Alden. This was taken to the Alden General Hospital while he's recuperating from a gunshot wound. Next. Now, these photographs were circulated to the police and the missing person bureaus throughout the country. Did anybody respond? No, it's the usual cranks. How long has he been on his own? Well, he left the hospital in August. Since then, we've traced him to uh, North Carolina, Texas, and San Francisco. Next. He keeps moving. Yes, he's been reported in the New York area. That's why we're calling on you. Well, uh, just how important is he? It's top priority. Urgent. Yeah, well, every assignment is urgent. I'm not inclined to discuss priorities with you. Just find the boy. The amnesia may not last indefinitely. Well, how do you know he still doesn't know who he is? Uh, he didn't when they fished him out of the water. He didn't last week in San Francisco. No. Well, I can only hope he doesn't stay. Next. Why? Why is he so important? I've given you all the information you require. Well, I can't help being curious. <laughs> yeah, that's obvious. Well, I'm supposed to... Pick this kid out of 10 million people in the New York area. And I'm not supposed to even ask any questions. Say so. Now, come on. Who is he? What are you going to do to him? Lights. Evening. Can I help you? I hope so, Max. I know you? Got a few questions for you. For what? I'm about your friend. Which one? This one. He calls himself Michael Alden. He does hang out here, doesn't he? He is your friend, isn't he? And you know where I can find him, don't you? Max? Mozart many times before. Well, somebody told me. Somebody sat beside me on the piano bench, listened, and instructed me. Probably when you were a little boy. You wanted to go out and play baseball or chase little girls. And your mother made you stay in and finish your practicing. That could be. Just now when I was playing, I felt very close to... Close to remembering. Yes. Where are you going? To get us something to eat. Now what? You're the most changeable person. I want to thank you. Don't be an idiot. You taught me how to dance, and I brushed up your Mozart. Even Stephen. Let me thank you. I can't remember the past. I don't have much present, so when I feel emotions with tags, like gratitude or affection, I scarcely recognize them. I'm afraid of them. I don't know how to express them. You could kiss me. 
Or we could play another duet. running, Michael. Meaning what? You run from place to place and town to town trying to find out who you are, and the answer may be as simple as a tune by Mozart. Simple little tunes by Mozart can be deceptive. <laughs> so can simple piano teachers. sense resisting. We don't want to hurt you. We just want to talk this guy. Out. Have you ever heard of us? Do you know what we do here? No, I couldn't care less. Well, this is the center of space research. Uh, you're Boris Karloff, and he's Bela Lugosi. I don't be impudent. Why not? An hour ago, thanks to you, I was chased, slammed around, and captured. If I had a gun, I might have killed somebody. Well, that's a risk we had to take. Oh, we did. Could you tell me why? What do Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo mean to you? A planet, a constellation, and a god. There are stages in the moon program. The United States government has committed $20 billion to it which has nothing to do with me. We think it does. We need your help. How can I possibly help you? Uh, Mr. Alden, uh, the Earth. Mr. Alden, the moon is only 221,463 miles from the Earth. Now, it's a short hop, a matter of uh, days. And just across the street. Venus is 26 million miles from us. And Pluto here is three billion miles out toward the void, and still only a next-door neighbor in terms of the universe. Now, these enormous distances, Mr. Rowland, these enormous distances are the real problem, the problem that scientists all over the world are trying to solve. What do you do here? You make boosters, rockets, what? This is a center for bioastronautic research. Bioastronautics, what's that? Well, bioastronautics is the study of space medicine. Other laboratories will build the machines. We are interested in the men. It will take hundreds, thousands of days to reach even our neighbors in the solar system. Now imagine, imagine a man in space for a half a year or more without external sounds, human contact, growing things, solid earth, loved ones. Sounds delightful. It'll be rough, very rough. Now what kind of man will be able to make it? What kind of man will be able to retain his sense and his sanity? What kind of man is the true spaceman, Mr. Rowland? Does he exist? Can we create him? 
And that's why we've been looking for you. Would you be interested in trying to help us find a way to put the man on Mars? In the Milky Way, light from this star at the furthest corner of our galaxy takes over 100,000 years to reach us. Next. Andromeda is another galaxy very much like our own that contains perhaps 30,000 million stars. Next. Can you grasp the fact that there are over one billion galaxies within the reach of our telescopes? And beyond that, who knows? Who will ever know? Lights. Why have you shown me all this stuff, Perkins? Well, you've been occupied with the problem of learning your identity. I wanted to show you that there are problems of more cosmic importance. Not for me. Well, that would be unfortunate. Why? You are unique. Everyone's unique. You know, the ordinary man is tied to the Earth in a thousand ways. Now, you have no, no conscious memory, no human ties, no connections. I want them. Now, but the fact is, you are free. I have friends. I have people who care about me. Oh, they're acquaintances of uh, the few weeks since you've been reborn. What do you want from me? Is it possible, Mr. Alden, that the true spaceman, the man who will be able to endure months of emptiness, is a man like you? A man uh, uncluttered by emotion, a man not connected to this planet by a, a thousand chains of memory? Do you intend to blast me into space? We propose to test you. <laughs> no, thank you. Mr. Rosen, thousands of young men have volunteered for the experimental aspects of the space program. Not me. You'll be given preliminary psychological tests. We'll pay you $40 a day. You'll learn a great deal about yourself. You might even regain your memory. Which would ruin me for your purposes. I'll take the risk. Yeah, you're very big on taking risks. You resent the fact that you're needed for this experiment because you're handicapped? You betcha. Well, nature is strange, but there are compensations. Sure, Doc. Travel into space is a reality. The planets, the galaxy, the universe, all realities, all out there, all waiting for us. If we have the courage. And all you remember are those two words. Coronet Blue. That's fascinating. Well, I'm anxious to hear more about it. I haven't agreed to participate in your experiment. Well, we'll talk more tomorrow. Good night. Good night. What do you think of him? Well, he's adaptable and intelligent and suspicious. Yeah, well, he is staying the night. Oh, I want you to continue with him first thing in the morning. Oh, then you're assigning me to the Mars Project. Yes, it'll uh, mean some late nights for you, familiarizing yourself with our uh, program. Sorry about that, but I had no way of knowing exactly when I'd find the boy. Well, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Oh, I'll need your report as soon as possible. Oh, of course. If he stays long enough for me to compile one. Oh, he'll stay all right, if only for the money. <laughs> Is this necessary? Uh, well, you never know when we might learn some detail that'll help us. <laughs> For him. You know, this Mars experiment is quite dangerous. Uh, he doesn't know that. Well, of course, I'll have to be candid with him at the earliest possible moment. How many Michael Aldens are there in this country? How many healthy, intelligent young men with total amnesia, huh? I know. He's unique. He's irreplaceable. I must tell him that his health and sanity might be affected by this experiment. You don't have to tell him anything. Just examine him, interview him, profile him, and indoctrinate him. Uh, perhaps I don't understand, but are you suggesting that I conceal facts in order to win his cooperation? Uh, Dr. Ross, you're a, a brilliant young man, but you know, I find some of your attitudes rather immature. Now, you are new here. Try to learn our techniques. Well, gladly, but under any circumstance, I feel I owe a sense of responsibility to my patient. Look at him. He is not a patient. He's a subject for an experiment. Now, don't look so shocked. I'm merely suggesting that we deal realistically with this boy. Now, we must remind him that he has no obligations on Earth, 
is without uh, friends, without purpose. We must free him of any emotional ties he may have developed since he lost his memory. We must suggest to him the, the advantages of working for us, the challenges, the rewards that await him. We brainwash him. <laughs> no, we uh, then offer him a free choice to volunteer. The illusion of free choice. Well, perhaps all free choice is an illusion. But Michael Alden is more than just a piece of equipment. Yes, that's quite true, yes. Yes, a piece of equipment I can always replace. I like you, Doctor. There's only one Michael Alden. Max! Max! Any news? No. Sorry. I went to the police again today. They won't tell me anything. It's as though Michael disappeared from the world, as though he never existed. You know how it was with him. There's always a chance that sooner or later he just wouldn't be around. You know, in a way, he never really did exist. Oh, it's so hard to understand. All these weeks, all these days, it's just hard to accept. Maybe, maybe we should be glad for him. Maybe it finally happened. Maybe you remembered. Oh, do you really think so? Susan, you know, I miss him too, very much. We can only hope that uh, he found it, whatever it was. Coronet Blue? Coronet Blue. The red planet Mars spends 35 million miles away from Earth, and she orbits the sun once every two years. The three-eighths of Mars' surface is covered with a blue or bluish-green material, indicating that probably some form of vegetation exists. It's uh, life, Mr. Alden, life on Mars. I miss Susan. I think about it often. Susan, the piano teacher. We were friends. How long did you know her? A week. Oh, a whole week. Well, of course, there's no more than simply casual acquaintances. He's got uh, sensory equipment, wires, medical instruments to the control room, where all of their reactions will be recorded. Every hour or so, they'll get a shot. They'll be drugged intravenously. Somebody up there will press a button, and then the needles down here will jab them to sleep. About an hour later, they'll get a jolt to wake them up. That'll happen 183 times. To them, it'll seem like 183 days, the time it takes to get to Mars. How long does it uh, really take? Seven days. The drugs distort time. They make a minute seem like a quarter of an hour or more. It's like when you ride a jet and it's night. You can't tell how fast you're going because it's, you can't feel anything and uh, you can't see anything outside. Something like that will happen to those guys. They won't be able to tell the difference between an hour in there and a half a day out here. Has this thing been tested? Yes. And it works? Yeah, it works. They want me to do it. They want to see how well I do in space. They'll test another man at the same time. You know, a normal man. So they can compare your reaction to his. A freak versus the good old-fashioned homo sapiens. Something like that. Who's the other guy? Me. You? Captain Clay Bresney at your service. Air Force. Right. How'd you get this assignment? I volunteered. Why? Why not? That's a big help. Do you need help? They dragged me off the street. They said, Alden, how would you like to be a make-believe astronaut? They didn't have to drag me, and I was knocking at the door. Adventure? Pay. I got a fat extra 65 bucks a month hazard pay for this assignment. Why? It took my grandfather four weeks in the hold of a cattle ship to get to this country. Nobody asked him why he did it. He had to. You have to do this. Someday, a man is going to ride a real spaceship to Mars. 
I want to be that man. You aim high. Clear area one. How about you? I don't know about me. Clear area one. Neither do I, baby. Neither do I. Let's go. Soundtrack one ready. What do you mean, sound test? Lift off, listen. Soundtracks two and three alert. Two and three ready. Ten second warning. All systems go. Five, four, three, two, one. Of a washing machine. Have you listened to anything I've said? Certainly. When the light goes on, I depress the switch underneath. Right. What's the big deal? The laboratory will be able to judge our ability to do work under space conditions by our response to the lights. Well, wouldn't the instruments in a real space flight be much more complicated? Yeah, but these will do for measuring our efficiency and checking if we still have our marbles. What's this? The abort button. If one of us uh, finds that it's getting too rough in here, we want to end the test. We just press that thing. Would it be much easier just to walk out? Uh, I don't think they'll leave the door open. Hi, Mom. I can see you, Mr. Alden. I can see you. Uh, this document describes the uh, agreement between us. It affirms that you're volunteering for our experimental program. It also enumerates our obligations to you in case of uh, accident or death. Yes. All right. I want to repeat that there are physical and psychological dangers to you in this experiment. I understand that. Uh, you can walk out of it right now without any shame or apology. <laughs> walk out? Where would I go? Aren't you still anxious to find out about yourself, your past, your identity? You can wait. What about your friends? Wilson, Susan, the others? They were important to me because they were all I had, but... I was only uh, one of Wilson's patients, one of Susan's boyfriends, one of Max's helpers. You wanted me to understand that. You wanted me to sever ties with the Earth. I hated you for it at first, but now I'm grateful. Because what you're doing here is important. More important than uh, trivial human relationships. You all, gentlemen, I'm due at the laboratory. Excuse me. A triumph. We detached him from the human race. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Very good. I'll uh, schedule the test for uh, next. Tuesday, that'd be a clay a time for a nice emotional goodbye with his wife and child. And Michael Alden? I will keep him here, safe and sound. And insulated from the pleasures and pains of human society. Tell me, Doctor, do you really think that in order to endure space, a man must completely forget everything about life on Earth? Whatever we're doing now is just the beginning. Perhaps the true spaceman will have to have chlorophyll in his veins. Perhaps he'll have to carry his vital organs on a canister on his back. Perhaps, but I'll make this prediction, that whatever we have to do with the body, it'll be trivial compared to what we have to do with the mind, if we're going to make it out there. Holding at minus 30 seconds, sir. Electroencephalograph repaired. All right, seal them up and prepare to resume counting. Thank you. 
like that. Go medical. Master electrical, okay? Sound and effects go. All right, lock them up. Lock them up. Report simulator. Simulator one, okay. Simulator two, okay. Uh, ready to resume concert. All right, get on with it. Minus 30 and counting. Light circuit ready. Ready. Go light circuit. Minus 20. So what difference from the rehearsals? Minus 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. Soundtrack 1. 3. 2. just went through. We have to expect the unexpected as part of the test. Simulator report. Simulator one, okay. Simulator two, okay. Prepare for work period one. And away we go. Well, Alden's blood pressure elevated during the launch, but it returned to near normal. Clay took it all in his stride. Yes, as far as you can tell from the instruments. Yes, of course. Listen, Doctor. The most interesting things will never be recorded on those gadgets. Clay. What? Nothing. I just want to make sure I wasn't going deaf. Yeah, they did a job on insulating us, didn't they? job on everything. Sight, sound, feeling. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny? What? Wouldn't it be funny if we were really launched, really in space? No such luck. And one thing you can be certain about, there's a whole laboratory full of guys right out there, drinking coffee and watching every time we twitch. You're very glad to be in this contraption, aren't you? Someday, baby. I'll be sitting in a chair like this, and that'll be a real window. And when I look out, I'll be able to say hi to Sagittarius and, uh, and not a Gemini and say, how do you do to Virgo? Uh, someday. Prepare for sleep cycle one. Prepare for sleep cycle one. Pleasant dreams, maybe. Uh, simulator one, ready. Simulator two, ready. Ready, doctor. Administer anesthetic, please. Patterns, Ross. It's perfectly normal, sir. That's our friend and our enemy, our challenge and our hope. I don't follow you. We send men to space. We put them into space suits and we supply them with air to breathe, food to eat. We eliminate their wastes. We control their temperatures. We protect them from radiation. We insulate them from solar particles and shield them from the sun. And then we drug them into sleep and stun them into wakefulness. And we will provide, gravity will create a, a little world to protect their fragile bodies, but the mind, the brain, we can't stop it, we can't control it. Awake or asleep, rational or irrational, conscious or unconscious, it thinks, it dreams, fears, desires, associates. Those little wiggles tell us that the brain is alive. But what is it thinking? What is it dreaming? What do the little lines represent? 
What kind of brain will be able to endure the terrors of interplanetary travel? They're coming out of it, sir. Minister Stimulant. Yes, sir. Hey, Alden, are you up? Yeah. How long were we out? I don't know. Sleep period's supposed to be an hour. Seems longer than that. Felt like a few minutes to me. Simulator report. Simulator one, okay. Simulator two, okay. Prepare for work period three. Three? I'm the two. We did it already. You're nuts. Shut up, they can hear every word. <laughs> Sleep period, eh? Prepare for sleep period 20. Work period 52. Prepare for sleep period 74. Accelerated pulse and respiration from both of them. Oh, well, you expected that? Yes, but not on this level. Is there any danger? No, but trouble. I attribute it to some residual effects of the drugs. Oh, we tested those drugs hundreds of times on dozens of men. Different men under different conditions react differently. And they have been in there the equivalent of two months. Yes, and they have almost four months to go. Uh, a little more off the top, please. I see stars. Thousands of stars. They can't be. There they are. Don't you see them? No. You're dreaming. No. Hold it. Is it. There's a malfunction here. Temperature's rising. Simulator 2, reporting temperature malfunction. Yeah, I feel it too. Prepare for work cycle 8-3. Listen, it's hot in here. Capsule temperature 102 degrees Fahrenheit, sir. Right, hold it down. Prepare for work cycle. The reaction times are slowing, Dr. Perkins. Alden has responded incorrectly to two signals of this cycle. Well, what do you think? Simulator 2 requesting report on temperature malfunction. Malfunction noted. Continue work on cycle 8-3. 8384. It's rusting in here. I don't care. Your life depends on work period 8-3. Continue, repeat, continue, continue. probably did it to us. It's like the stars. Out there. You do see them? Yeah. Out there. Millions of them. Part of the test. Listen. You remember what you said a long time ago? Is it possible? You sure this is really a test? What else could it be? Maybe this is really it. I don't know. Maybe we're really up here. Maybe, maybe they had to do it to us this way. Maybe, you know, psychologically. No, no, they're right over there. No, no sure, I know. I don't know over there. I know you're right over there. Why don't you turn down the heat? Come on, you're right over there. Hey! Turn down the heat! Oh, it's hot. Is it really true that you can't remember who you are? Sure. That must be rough. That's not so bad. I keep dreaming about my family. 
Wish I could forget them, though. I'm glad you're here. I wouldn't want to try this alone. That's not bad being alone. Free, no ties. Uh, everybody has ties. Not me. I'm the man in the movement. Yeah, both of us. Oh, we get back. There'll be a big parade, you know? Ticker tape, bands, my wife and kids cheering, you know? Folks around. I've got folks somewhere. Sure you have. They kept telling me. No family. No friends. Nobody cares. Over and over again. Uh, this is all part of the test. Nobody. Here, there, alone. No difference. Nobody. That's what they said. It's part of the test. Stresses are too extreme, Dr. Perkins. They're not two pieces of machinery that you can just run down ruthlessly until one or both of them break. I've been in there 120 cycles. That's four months. Nobody's ever been in space anywhere near that long. Well, that's the nature of the test. The fact is that we have a responsibility for the life and sanity of those two men. Look at them. I've seen worse. Everything that's happening here is something that might happen in space. Yes, but whether it's a test or the real thing, the fact is that human beings can stand only so much. How much? I have to go, honey. You call me as soon as you can. Sure, don't worry. I'm not worried. You'll do fine. You betcha. Listen, darling. Whatever happens, we're here. Waiting, 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 waiting. Simulators report. Simulators report. I'm here. I'm here, okay? Okay. Simulator one, okay. Simulator two, okay. Listen, are you guys still there? Yeah. Prepare for work period one, two, nine. Shall we continue? Hmm? Yes, administer the anesthetic. Yes, sir. They can't go on. I don't want them to end the test at any time. All he has to do is press the abort button. They may not remember that by now. They'll remember. But we can't leave it up to them. Doctor, as you once said, nobody's ever been in space this long before. It's all new, all happening for the first time. Now, you show me some solid medical evidence of this danger. Until then, we proceed. Yes, until one of them cracks. That they are in a million miles in space. For all they know by now, that's just where they are. The schedule calls for isolation separation now, sir. Right, proceed. Simulators report. What's happened? Alden! Alden! 
Simulator 1 has left capsule to perform maneuvers. Where is he? What's happened to him? No, no, come on. Really, really, what happened? Where is he? What's happened to him? Simulator 2. Prepare for work period 130. I'm not fooled. You can't make me say this is real. I volunteered. Remember that. I'm no fool. The future's in the sky. Down here. Put to beat those Ruskies. You count on that. I'll be part of it. Where is he? Housing! Oh, I remember everything. You ask me anything. Go ahead. Ask me. Go ahead. Ask me. I remember Blasto perfectly. You know. Why was that buffeting? There was no talk about buffeting. I'm all right. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll show the old man. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not... Just... Listen, there's nobody here. Sleep cycle 142. Here, look at this. Fantastic. Played blood pressure, his respiration, everything beginning to return to normal. How do you account for it? Give me an emergency standby right away. But he's never been in better shape. We've been waiting six days for the doctor. Don't even know when you see it. Clay Bresney to control. Clay Bresney to control. Preparing for re-entry. Clay Bresney to control. Clay Bresney to control. Preparing for re-entry. What re-entry? What's he talking about? Am I in voice contact? Repeat, am I in voice contact? Dr. Perkins? Uh, go ahead, we read you. Space vehicle performing normally. All systems go and ready for re-entry. I must report with sadness the death of my co-pilot, Michael Alden. He lives, however, to see the flag of the United States of America planted on the red earth of the planet Mars. Exercise over. Remove the subject. I said, get those men out of there! You heard the man. Exercise terminal. Exercise terminal. Please call my wife and ask, ask her to call me. Tell her I'm well. Discontinue. 12, 22, 14, 35. Tell the world it's good to be home. It's good to be home. Played well, son. Very well. You've got clever fingers. Clever fingers. Thank you, Mother. 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 Test it over. It can't be. It can't be over. I was remembering. Go away. Let me finish. Let me remember. Let me remember. I did it. I did it, didn't I, Dr. Ross? I did it. You did fine. I, did. I wanted to more than anything in this world. I know. The president will call. Only I'm counting on his call. Will he? Tell the hospital I'll be over there as soon as I can get away from here. Oh, it's Clay. Well, he'll be all right. Go. Get him up. All right, let's go. He cracked, didn't he? Right. We'll talk about it at the debriefing. You must think you're a great success, Dr. Perkins, a real genius. I made it because you convinced me that I had no place on this earth. Well, I had a flash for you from outer space. You want to know why I made it through your torture chamber? Not because I forgot about this earth, but because I remembered it. <laughs> There are people who care about me. People I care about. So your test proves nothing except that Clay is human and I am human. Which is more than I can say for you. Thank you, doctor, for showing me a piece of care. Who really cares? Thank you. You went too far, Dr. Perkins. I don't think so. Clay Bresney is a sick man. I'm 
the way it's going to be in outer space, like this, and a thousand times worse. That's no excuse. Do you think I enjoy what I did? Do you think I'd do all the testing on myself if I could? I can't. You've got to find out. The tests learn. The old men are going to sit in conference rooms, make the decisions. They're going to send these young kids out into eternity, and we have got to be ready. Why? Why do we have fingers and a thumb instead of a paw? Why, why did the ape learn to walk upright? You're talking about evolution. Evolution is what we call the history of man. When we look back on it, when we look forward, it's called destiny. Man's destiny. Up there. And meanwhile, down here, we might very well blow ourselves up. All the more reason to hurry. Just so that we can repeat the same mistakes again. Yes, the same mistakes and the same glories, like the man said. Sometimes you have to change in order to stay the same. But what have we learned from all this? Yeah, why did Clay Bresnia fail and Alden succeed? What combination of circumstance, memory, and training made it turn out the way it did? And we'll have to study the record, conduct more tests. We'll find out. More tests? Like this one. And worse. Men will suffer, men and will die. In our effort to conquer space, that's a fact you've got to learn to live with, Doctor. I've been trained to try to heal the mind, not to try to destroy it. I came here because I thought that through space we could learn things about how to improve life here on Earth. Why are you working for me? Forget life on Earth. Concentrate on life out there. That's what I find so difficult. Then resign. Go into private practice. In 10, 20 years from now, you'll be able to look at the space shot on television when our boys do make it to Mars. And you'll be able to say, thank God, thank God. And your conscience won't be soiled by the memory of the pain these kids endured to make it possible. Your conscience will be clear, Doctor. You'll be an angel. You leave here. Leave the job to me. I am the monster. Right, Doctor. <laughs> When the days and weeks passed and I hadn't heard from you, I was very hurt. I'm sorry. I came back to apologize. That's all? An apology? What else can I do? I'm like this. I mean, how can you blast off into the future when you don't understand the past? What about the present, Michael? Right now? No duets? I hope so. Someday, when I've found myself. Someday? I wish it could be now. Bye, Michael. Who 